Hey guys, good afternoon. This is Tobias, and today I wanted to show you how to set up a quick effect uh, that was inspired by Matrix Resurrections that I just saw over the weekend. And uh, in the movie, they had sort of like these, you know, synthetic nano form people, and uh, I thought it was a really kind of cool effect um, how they did that. And uh, so I was inspired to kind of try to set something up like that uh, today. Um, here at work at side effects so uh, here we're using Houdini of course because it's the best and um, let's go ahead and walk through how we did this real quick so it, I would say this whole effect should take probably about 20 minutes probably less than half an hour to set all this up um, even the caching is real quick the file caching uh, but let me show you exactly what happened here um, and then I'll explain as best as I can as I go through and uh, we'll go through the process Okay, so the first thing we want to do is bring in uh, a model. Um, and I just used an FBX animation. Uh, I didn't make this animation, it's just sort of like a generic sort of walk cycle of a female model here. Uh, and I didn't do anything to it, just brought it in the way it is. Um, and then I got rid of the couple of the eye elements just to leave the uh, corneas. Um, and the way I did that is I just went in and uh, selected the groups that were already existing on this uh, that I didn't want um, and just blasted them out uh, and that way I was just left with the corneas um, and this is a walk cycle uh, so in order to have it uh, continue on after it finished its whatever in this case uh, 44 frames I just added a retime node in Houdini and uh, set the uh, input range to post cycle uh, for the frame range and what that'll do is that'll just continue it'll just cycle or loop the animation that's already there uh, and then we get into the fun part uh, which is we will paint on oops the why is that not working probably because I had this turned off there we go um, all right so we'll paint on a mask onto the model of where we want to sort of separate how uh, these little particles are going to emit from so we have more control over them um, so in the movie if you remember um, they had more of like kind of a solid form even though there were little spherical particles like around the face and the body and all of that uh, so we could just do that with a simple uh, attribute paint in Houdini just paint on the area that um, we want to isolate and uh, then smooth it out a little bit in the same note um, I'll show you what that looks like here this is what the tool actually looks like uh, so you could just paint on and then go back and uh, shift and uh, paint over the edges and then that way it'll uh, smooth out what you're looking at there alright so let's go back to look at that mask and that's what you end up with when you're done and what I did with this mask is uh, I added a little bit of noise to it just to uh, have it sort of shift um, as time went on um, and you can see that here yeah so that mask is going to add some general noise in the uh, in the color the color shift of what that mask is right and then uh, that will drive a scatter that I'm using to generate the points I'm going to use to do my particle system right so uh, in I isolated this section of the model um, and what that noise is doing is it's sort of altering the density of the points over time so it's like dynamically changing it uh, and that makes it just kind of interesting more like a fluid kind of effect moving um, and then I just took that mask over here did a simple little code in VEX uh, just taking the existing max, uh, mask and multiplying it by a negative one uh, and then adding one to it so it zeroes out and then I get the inversion of that which you get here uh, so everything in red is you know the inversion of what this mask is right and then the same thing I just added some points to that uh, and then what I'm doing here is I group them because uh, I'm going to use these groups later and all I did was just simply include make no changes this is the default node and I just changed the name to this uh, short-lived group here which I later called surface because uh, that's what that is and I just have the group name is dollar sign OS so it takes this name here and then for the the particles that I intend to trail later on I'm going to invert that which I did and then call
call that group the trailing group and then uh, this is going to be out import so uh, this is the system that's going to drive the particle system uh, later on all right so all we do is we get out of that and then create a new node I like to sort of separate these things out and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the points that we processed right so we're right where we left off this is exactly what we wanted and now we have uh, excuse me these groups that we wanted right they're sitting right there and then I just feed that into a pop network and once we get into the pop network we can separate these out now by default um, when you lay down a pop network in Houdini you only get one of these pop sources right but I already knew that I had two groups so I just duplicated that and for the first one I have it picking out the uh, source group which is the short-lived group which is this right and I'm scattering it onto all the points because we already created the points um, the only downside to that is you don't get control over the number of points um, but that's okay because I didn't want it to um, get out of control on me so I just I did that in the scatter node in the uh, the sourcing when, I, when we process it, process it earlier uh, and then the ones that I want to do trailing on I'll show you that real quick um, it's a lesser density right I don't need a lot of particles there so but I have that as the trailing group and here I'm controlling the birth rate you know a much less number even though we do have points uh, that we can use I if, if you wanted to you could just change it to uh, points instead of all points and that way you can control this um, but when I was doing this earlier I just uh, had a little bit more control when I did it this way um, and then we're just merging them together and I'm adding a little bit of uh, distortion or wind if you will uh, surface distortion turbulence uh, based on the grouping right so I had what this is technically called here uh, even these are pop sources but Houdini sees these as streams um, so I can separate that out based on what I named it um, so here I have a stream underscore surface form which is this here so this effect of noise is only working on this particular uh, the densest stream that you see here and what's happening over time I'm not gonna play it right now because I already cached it um, and I'll show you that in a second it's it's actually moving all these particles around the surface in a kind of cool way so it doesn't look just static uh, and then the same thing is kind of going on with the um, trailing form which is these little particles that are coming off or the you know the less dense particles that are gonna form the little wispy particles right and then that's that's really it it's really that simple um, we just bring that in uh, and then we just cache it to disk and I'm gonna just take this uh, visualizer off there we go and once we cache that we can uh, play it back and we get an effect that looks like this and what's happening is that uh, the densest areas like the face and all that the arms to the hands that I want to sort of maintain sort of a constant form are doing just that and the ones I want to be more wispy are sort of trailing off and being wispy all right and the cool thing about this is since we spent the time to set it up like this we do have the ability uh, to have control over the different grouping that we have here so I can control the scale of the trailing particles I just did a quick little bit of code here that allows me to do that and also for the surface particles it's literally the same no duplicated but I, then I can attach some color to it copy some spheres to those points and just sort of scroll in the timeline here and we can see we get this cool kind of thing here this is not a render this is just in viewport uh, but here's some interesting stuff here, right? So we can change, say, the scale of these trailing particles. You know, it's probably going to look a little corny, but you'll see what I'm talking about. You get much more control over what you're doing um, this way, you know, sort of procedural way. If you want, you know, the coloring and so forth. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what we did here. Whoops. Right, so. We're able to do whatever we want uh, in case you're wondering why this is working pretty well uh, you should be copying when you do this a 
sphere or whatever, uh, do it as a polygon, not as a not as a mesh, because um, uh, Houdini is going to process a lot faster. And also, uh, make sure you check this pack and instance on the copy of points. And once you output that, that's that's what you get. You get this this whole effect here. Now I didn't cache the uh, the uh, copy the actual geometry here, uh, and the reason I didn't do that is because. Uh, I didn't feel like it for one. Uh, and second, uh, you don't necessarily have to cache geometry for, to render this effect. Um, in Houdini, uh, you'll have the option of you know rendering geometry if you want like this, or if you're using a third-party render engine like Redshift, it'll just actually recognize the points, all the point data, and it'll just sort of do it, uh, you know, a proxy. Um, surface at render time so it'll it'll create all these little points and stuff for you so there's no need for you to actually to copy this out so um, you'd probably want to have a separate output here for you know third party third party render whatever you know something like that and that way you just had the points it's just the point data uh, with the color and the scale and all that kind of stuff and uh, that's really it so that's that's how you get that effect uh, just over 10 minutes. So yeah, pretty easy setup. Pretty cool. Um, okay. Hope that was helpful to somebody or just interesting to anybody who was curious about how this kind of thing is done. And you all have a nice day. Talk to you later.